So, in drama news, Drama Llama reporting, Tolarian Community College takes a shot at Adam Sleeve Media. Now, this is not uncommon, but it is interesting to see, and it's kind of funny, actually, if you think about it. Magic is dying. No one goes to Grand Prix events anymore. I'm quitting Magic, and this time I meant mean it. One one <laughs> exclamation mark. So this is Tolarian Community College referring to Unsleeves Media's quote, which we'll see later, that magic is dying and people are not going to GPs. To counter this evidence, Tolarian Community College shows a sign that says the main event of MTG New Jersey is filled. It is sold out. So this is the tweet. Now, just because one event is sold out does not mean that there has not been a decline in GPs because there's mo multiple GPs. It's still very early on. And it might just be an okay format. Who knows what the next format will entail and whether or not it will be as good as the Ravnica block because there's only so often we can go to Ravnica. I assume the next set, we're not going to Ravnica. Ravnica is a honey hole. And eventually, the honey hole has to uh, be left alone to replace the honey. So this is a direct shot at Unsleeve Media. It is not concealed in any way. And of course, uh, Jeremy immediately understood what it was. His response was, so Channel Fireball stated it was a fact that Grand Prix attendance was down something like 10% last year. Facts back up my claim. What backs up yours? I one one single event congrats you look like an idiot this is in response to of course to larian community college's post and it's interesting right because you often don't see to community college being this direct with kind of um a rub if you will but this is pretty direct uh, this targets one person on sleeve media and the tension I would recommend, it's still very high between the two. And I don't think either Jeremy or Brian will let it go. Uh, it stems from an app a long time ago. I made a video about it. You can listen to a voice recording. Here is Rogue Deck Builder. What bugs me is they are evading realities that happened in Magic 2018, which was both a decrease in sales and player base. We shouldn't be celebrating magic the stagnation. On top of this, much of the success of 2018 was milking the enfranchised whales, which isn't sustainable. Uh, Kevin from Rogue Deck Builders, smart guy. We used to be friends, I would say. And he has identified the issue. The issue is we're not getting new players. And for whatever reason, they're making more money, which you talk about Mythic Editions, Ultimate Box Toppers. I mean, <laughs> when you use Mythic and Ultimate and Ultimate Masters and Box Toppers, these are things that, yes, they do generate revenue and profit and margins, but they are not actually generating new players because new players are unlikely to spend $250 for a Mythic Edition on a website that breaks down and they don't know if they ordered it or not. I don't know. It is quite interesting. And then Rogue also points out that Hearthstone collapsed, Artifact was a dud, and Arena exploded. So we should have seen a much larger growth in 2018 than we did, which was actually a decline. So it was a growth in terms of profitability but it was a decline in terms of the overall player base. Um, and here we have someone who doesn't like Jeremy. And I think the drama is interesting from a psychology perspective. Um, from a socio perspective, it is not as interesting because they both make about the same amount of money. But from a ideology perspective, um, you have Tolarian, who's very on the left, and you have on sleeve who's very on the right even though they make about the same amount of money don't think Tolarian is some popper he just likes the format 
but I guarantee you Tolarian makes 200k easy, maybe a quarter million. He is in the 1% of earners for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, he has a new home. Um, I mean, the stuff that he has and he shows aged steak, oysters. This is not stuff that, uh, in my opinion, you would want to show to your patrons and donors that this is where your money is going. But in, another opinion is that he does benefit greatly from uh, having, you know, being the largest YouTuber. So Unsleeve Media said, the same idiots cheering about my ban will be sitting alone at a failing local game store six months from now for the seventh consecutive week of draft not firing. I have mentioned what's happening at my store and what happened in my friend's stores and what's happening across Houston. Now, of course, the other stores are all going to disagree, but across multiple stores, I would say, the events are not firing because they're not profitable. If they're not profitable, then we don't fire events. So a lot of the things that you would want to have an event is you want to sell people boxes, right, at the event. You want to sell them singles or boxes. And single prices are absolute trash because you have new commander decks coming out. Not commander. What is it called? Challenger decks, right? So how expensive? I mean, you cannot be a store and bank on singles anymore because the challenger deck. Well, let me go back. If you are a store, the majority of your singles will be standard cards. That's just how it is. Challenger decks are actually a very bad thing for you. For people who want to sell lots of singles. Because as we saw before, four Heart of Kirins, a Fatal Pust, a Chandra, a Hazaret. These are things that or it should be your main sellers that you can sell at huge profit margins and make a lot of money from. But if everyone can buy them at Walmart now, then why would they buy from you for more money when they can get the whole deck at Walmart? The same with Heart of Kinran and all of this good stuff. Now, I like Challenger decks, but as a store, I have a different view on them. On them. I view them as being a setting a very short time period so standard selling standard singles the time period is very short to move on them anyway but with the approaching challenger decks they're even shorter a you don't know what's in them yet and that's always a danger and b once they come out whatever's in them you cannot sell anymore you just cannot because someone can go to walmart and get the same cards so uh, one of the things that uh, I have experienced is the stores are much less likely to have pre-release. DNA Comics used to have 120 people when I first moved here. Now it refuses to carry magic. It doesn't do carry magic, and it's very simple why. The simple reason it does not carry magic, it's not profitable. Now, when you have these Mythic Editions, so if you're a Magic player and you have $250 to spend, you can buy a Mythic Edition from Hasbro, guaranteed eight Mythic Planeswalkers and some other packs, possibly more Planeswalkers. Or you can buy two boxes and a fat pack and never be able, and not even pull eight Mythics total. Or you can have these eight guaranteed Mythics for our Planeswalkers. Hmm, what do you want to do, casual player? Oh, I'll buy it online. Oh, you want to buy Ultimate Masters? Oh, Sports and More is 50% cheaper than you are. It is savage what Magic the Gathering is doing to its stores. I will talk about this a little bit more in detail, but I don't think that Unsleeve is wrong here. Store attendance, at least for me in a big city, Houston is the fourth largest city, is way down. To the point that some a store that had 120 people at pre-release who constantly get 40 people at FNM decides that's not profitable. That model is not profitable. And I broke it down in my video and my other channel exactly what FNM costs and what it brings in. So I have, um, I charted it in a, um, well, a chart. 
and it comes out to be F and M at least under my store model with how much I pay. I'm not going to pay anyone less than fifteen dollars an hour. I don't believe in that. I'm not liberal, but I believe that you should pay people uh, what they can live on because that way they will be more likely to do a good job. So I'm paying them fifteen dollars an hour because I feel like if I pay them less, they're going to do a worse job. It might take a two hour, 22 minute lunch break that is paid if I paid them less. So why not give them a good salary and then have them grow with you and stay with you? Because finding good help is very difficult to do. But this is a low blow from Tolarian Community College. And don't think that Tolarian Community College is be beyond throwing one of these punches to the gut. Because that's what it is to Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy does not cover much um, magic anymore. And one of the things that Jeremy is really into is politics and things of that nature, which Tolarian Community College is also into. So you have two very different political views, and that's why Tolarian Community College threw this gut punch, because it's not really based on data. It's actually quite easy to refute because it's just one event in New Jersey. I mean, it doesn't mean every GP is going to sell out and you don't know what the cap was. So if the cap is 100 people, yeah, it will sell out because it's 100 people. But if the cap is even bigger, then maybe you needed a better vendor, a, a venue. Maybe the venue you picked was small. Like selling out is not something good. Selling out of a main event for people who want to be at the main event, it cannot, viewed, cannot be viewed positively. It means that the planning was incorrect. There's people who want to hand you money, but they cannot. You have to turn away people wanting to give you money because you miscalculated somewhere. I will say Ravnica has been a surprisingly good block. But I will also say we cannot rely on Ravnica forever. We're not returning here for another five to six years. And maybe we can go back to Innistrad, but we're not going to Zendikar anytime soon. So what's actually gained? Like, what's the whole post about? The post is not actually about GP attendance. It's about the other part. The man, I'm going to quit magic, and I mean it this time. That vividly attacks on Leave Media. There's no other way to point it out. And there's no other way to, you know, they're saying this little kid, look, look at this little kid. It's not right to mock people for being honest about numbers and the past based on the present. I think someone broke the professor. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, it's kind of funny. And it's funny that even now when on sleeve media is really not doing much magic, it's still happening over and over again. It's fantastic, really. Because you can see there's no clear example, in my opinion, of the political divide and what it's doing to our country, the U.S., which is my country, and to what people in the magic community just know that these two people at one time were friends. They were. We were all in the same Facebook group together. We all, you know, Skype together, like Weds. I mean, we all used to be friends together, like Rogue. And now we're not. And it's because we all have different political views. And some of us are really on the right. Some of us are really on the left. Some of us are eating junior cheeseburgers right now. And some of us are, are on diet. Um, and that is very interesting to know that when you have different people in our community, uh, they will act and behave differently because they have different objectives. Rudy's objective is to sell you magic cards. End goal. On Sleeve's objective is somewhat disruptive to I be, mean, I guess, an agent of disruption. And Tolarian's objective is to keep the status quo because that's beneficial to him. The Manor Source's objective is to receive as much donation as possible, move to the UK. Based on my study of UK shows like Benefits and Proud of It and take pay for it or take it away, I think the UK is a perfect place for him to be. Um, you cannot make, you don't need, it's universal healthcare. 
I think education is free or very discounted. I mean, man, we're sending everybody to the UK that we don't. That's not a capitalist. Anyway, that's my plan. My plan is let's send all the content creators who need to ask for donations. Let's just send them to the UK. Get them some health insurance. Get them some, you know, homes. I was watching Benefits and proud of it. A mom was seven. I think the seven, it was like five different fathers with seven kids. She was a single mom. And they built her a home for half a million dollars. Half a million pounds, which is like a million dollars. And she just kept complaining about it because she was like, oh, it's near a railroad and I don't like it. It's like a beautiful home, a stunning home and a really good neighborhood. And her school, her children, you know, are in public school. And then they'll get paid for college and she gets all these benefits and housing and special benefits and disability and all these really, really good stuff. And at the end of the day, she's upset. So I say, let's send all the mana sources to the UK and not let them return because I think they would be happier there. The A would be happier. I don't know. This is a tangent. Okay, back to it. There is beef. It is beef. 